Hello and welcome to our machine. This time I want to show you a nice measuring device. It's capable of measuring radio frequencies all over the bands we use. And of course that's something very interesting to us when we fly FPV. So there's a lot of guesswork going on if you cope with radio frequencies. You have your radio controlled aircraft which is either on 2.4 GHz, which is the most common uh, thing. On 2.4 GHz you also have wi Wi-Fi's, you have smartphones emitting 2.4 GHz. Then you have 5.8 for video most of the times. You also have Wi-Fi on 5.8, not so common, but it's catching up. Then you have maybe your long-range UHF radio which is on 433 megahertz. Some of you might fly video at 900 megahertz, 1200, 1300, uh, 2.4, 5.8. I think I already did a small introduction to what the different frequencies uh, are good for. In short, the lower the frequencies, the better the penetration through objects is, but they cannot give you such a sharp image. 2.4 is a good compromise. It can give you really nice long-range video signal and it gives you a good image quality also. But uh, if you fly near cities uh, where the Wi-Fi's are, you can be disturbed by other 2.4 gigahertz sources. So the air is more congested uh, with 2.4 gigahertz waves. That's why most of you uh, move to 5.8. 5.8 is very sharp, it can give you really nice quality because it has such a high frequency and can transfer more data per second, to say so, even if it's uh, analog video. Uh, but it doesn't travel the same distance with the same millivolts. So you need more power to get to the same distance. Or you have to have really good antennas, for example, I used the 13 dBi gain patch antennas on my Immersion RC Duo 58 V3 here. And with those antennas you can even get very far with 5.8 GHz. Little tip here, as these antennas have around 35 degree of opening angle, <laughs> Like this, uh, I just did draw the the angle here with with the pencil and mounted the second antenna, tilted half the way. So all in all, I have 70 degree of radiation beam, and that's a decent range. So at the field, I just look on the lines here and know approximately where I can go really far and really safe. So uh, it's really important to know what radio frequencies are used, what is out there and how does it work together, what device influences or interferes with another device. A few years ago I got the little RF Explorer. It's a nice and handy device, which in my case has two models in, in it. It's a sub gigahertz module from 240 to 960 megahertz so this shows you UHF on 433 and the second module I bought with it is the 2.4 gigahertz module so with this device I was able to scan the air for UHF band if it's free and scan uh, the 2.4 gigahertz and um, since I moved to 5.8 and so many use it, I always wanted to see what happens on the 5.8 band. Um, there is another version of the RF Explorer that also has 5.8 gigahertz band. Um, I will link you the, the website but it doesn't, doesn't show you the whole bandwidth. So I always wanted to see it all and have a capable device. 
that can show me from 10 megahertz to 6 gigahertz the whole band and you just zoom in where you want to know what's happening or you just watch the whole band from from a further distance and check where are the spikes what's going on around you and this is exactly what I got the Aronia Spectrum for so let's check it out and see what's in the box so these are the contents of the nice box it comes in first of all of course the device itself the Aronia Spectran HF 6065 in my case the second most important part is the good directional antenna that is calibrated and will give you really nice results it's an Hyperlock 7060 and basically it's some sort of a Yagi antenna it has wires running this way and one this, that way I show you a pic now with the transparent version you could also get so you see what's inside this antenna box it has a screw here for standard tripod mount for tripod you get this funny little thing that looks like a pistol grip it can be angled and the cool thing is it can be converted to a little tripod really convenient and you can use it either for the spectrum itself on the back or for the antenna and there are two different modes of operation you could mount the antenna here on top with a little SMA adapter that comes with it you just screw that down here and that gives you one-handed operation but you have to aim the, the whole unit where you want to measure the second mode of operation with this one meter extension cable and operate the device with two hands which is very convenient and if you're mobile and want to measure something you go like this and it's also important to change the polarization of the antenna sometimes most of the times I read that you get better reception of signals if you hold it 90 degree angled instead of this go this because most of the antennas are aimed that way what sells in the box here there's a little SMA tool to tighten it and the adapter here it's a, it's a wall plug that delivers 12 volts to charge the battery that's inside and the battery is 1300 million okay so this spectrum has the range from 10 megahertz to 6 gigahertz so it's a really huge band to scan and it covers all the interesting stuff for RC and it my device also comes with a integrated pre-amplification circuitry so it's really sensitive you see in the lower part is the spectrometer part where it draws the lines and the strengths of the signals as lines here you also see the dbi value of the line the upper half you see the power meter of the current signal strengths in decibel and some status windows if I wanted to measure the the output of an UHF radio for example I'd go to the menu into center megahertz and type in 433 because I already know where it should emit and for span span is the is the bandwidth 
the, the smaller span you have, the faster and the more accurate you can scan for frequencies. And if you have a broad span, then the scan will be slower. Because really what this spectrometer does, it tunes to a specific radio frequency and measures the, res the receiving strengths on this frequency, then moves to the next, and so on. And so it, it has to do this uh, hundreds of times, very fast. So the span here I'm gonna set is gonna be low like 40 megahertz. Well, it's, it's a medium span. You could also set to low and high frequency and define the span via these two values. The radio bandwidth is the resolution of the frequencies. The lower you go here, the longer it will take you. And if you go really high, it or even full, it won't be as accurate, but it's uh, almost real-time fast. So this should also be in according to the span. Here we have a 40 span. It should be uh, around a division of 10 to 20 times less than the span. So if we have 40 span, 1 megahertz could, could, no, could be okay, but it's maybe too exact. Let's look. Then we have the video bandwidth. The video bandwidth is the flattening factor. Uh, this could help you flatten out unwanted noise, but it would also make for a less detailed result. So here it's... Uh, you don't go low for a better image, but you go high. 1 MHz radio bandwidth, so I should be at least 1 MHz video bandwidth or above. I go to 3. The sweep time is the time you set for the whole span to be scanned. And it's like in exposure time in photography, if you let the device scan the whole span for even a second or something like that, you get more resolution, you get more accurate measurements because it has time to measure for a signal on each single frequency for a longer time and yeah. sweep time I'm going to set well, 30 milliseconds that's the reference level it's on the very bottom of your radio frequencies you have a lot of noise a lot of little waves going on and you might wanna move up the level to eliminate all the unnecessary noise and just see the spikes of signals that's going on. But you can also move this with the curves up and down later. Range could either be uh, 100 decibel or 50 decibel. It's the, the y-axis on your spectrometer. And if you have really low, low uh, sensitivity signals, then you might want to change the span from 100 to 50 decibel to look there in more detail. Attenuation uh, defines the dampening of the signal, the, the resistance, the resistor of the radio signal. I leave atten to auto. If you have really strong signals, it will automatically give some resistance to this. Preamp is only if you have installed the option, but it, if preamp is on, you get 15 decibel more of sensitivity, which is good to see more real signals in the noise floor. So the noise floor will move further down, which is usually good. Demodulation is if you scan really low frequencies that can carry audio, audio indicator. You can uh, search for bugs in your apartment if you'd like and have a beeping sound show you that something's there. Detect. You could also have the root mean square which is the, the average 
of the signal, the, the real power of a signal, or show the, the peaks, the minimum and maximum of a signal. Uh, it's the, the display is more accurate if you're in RMS. The display can be set to write or to hold the values or to show the average value. So if you're measuring for a longer time you might want to hold it and see all the maximum spikes that go on. Default it's in write, but you can also uh, adjust it via, uh, while you're out of the menu with pressing the dot button and change between write and hold, but not average. Uh, go to write. Unit is dBm in my case here, or dB microvolts or watts per square meter, I think, milliamp per square meter. You can tell the device how many automatic markers you want up here. It goes from 1 to 3. And you can set the marker level. It's on 50 dB here. So that means if a spike is uh, with higher strength than 50 dB, it is counted as a mark and, and marked. In marker display you can choose whether to see the frequency or the amplitude, which is a decibel. Back BB, that's what's shown up in the power meter section. Spectrum or broadband detection. I'll come to that later. Cable. So, as in my configuration at the moment, I'm in the one meter standard cable that comes with it. Oh, I skipped antenna type. That's very important to set the, the correct antenna so you have the right calibration values in the device. So, I have the Hyperlock 7060 here. So, that's pretty decent menu which gives you a lot of opportunities and I would compare this spectrum to the RF Explorer as like if this was a DSLR camera and this is a little compact camera so this does a lot of the stuff for you you don't have to know much if you use this but you cannot configure as much as here. On the other side here you have like on a DSLR manual exposure times, shutter times, you have all the stuff you might want to change to really see uh, the whole picture. So this is more an expert level device. Okay so now I want to examine the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. I'm here in the ground floor where the Wi-Fi is further away. Center at 2445, which is around the center of Wi-Fi. Span of 400 megahertz. Radio bandwidth of 1 megahertz. So I now see the occasional spikes here at my Wi-Fi. Can I show you an active Wi-Fi? If I turn my cell phone on, you now see a much closer Wi-Fi signal here. Okay, so since we're streaming, we see some more Wi-Fi traffic going on here. Even better to be seen if I move the cell phone to the antenna up here. Now I'm turning on Tarani on 2.4. And we will see, yeah, you see crazy stuff going on here. I see rapidly moving spikes all over the bandwidth and I'm wondering now that I have this device if it's really from 2382 uh, I'm, I'm changing the whole note so we see the whole picture you see the whole noise floor of course it rolls and you see the ranges where it really hops and I'd say it starts here at 24. No, maybe to like here. Yeah, so 24 to 25. The whole uh, 
2.4 gigahertz bandwidth is hopped around and the neighbor channels are moving up also yeah and this is really the reason we like to get such a device to see or to better understand what really is going on could even try to get the bigger span which doesn't make a sense but 800 megahertz oh. of course I should now try full full yeah if you're on radio bandwidth full and video bandwidth full you really just see the strongest signals why not moving it even wilder and get the span get the sand to 3 gigahertz and the span also to no span to 6 gigahertz as that's what this device is basically capable of <laughs> so this is some real really crazy stuff let this run here for some time you see a good picture of what's going on wirelessly speaking around you wanna see more detail okay so this is the best picture you can get from this device <laughs> It's really from the lowest end to the highest end. It's really moving slow because I have set it to 3 megahertz. From 6000 megahertz, is we're having an one automatically found peak at 950 megahertz, which is a mobile phone. One additional point. Now we configured some really crazy stuff here and I have uh, number keys here from 1 to 0 and all are predefined scan settings so with the software you can use your own settings and at 1 I have 5G8 fat jack <laughs> so this is my 5.8 gigahertz band and it's not not heavily used second button is easy UHF you can of course modify this text on the computer and I see the a little spike at 440 3 is Wi-Fi wireless LAN and wireless LAN as I told you it's up the next room I have to move around the antenna a bit to see something 5 GSM 900 that, that's the mobile phone stuff and LTE 2.6 gigahertz oh, maybe this is used it looks like some signal catching up here so you can really measure mobile phone posts out there in the landscape and see what frequency they are at and if you have a frequency plan you can also say or tell which mobile phone vendor that is sending out there so now I have set up the laptop to be the spectrum screen I just connected the USB cable be sure to have a USB cable with a ferret core not to have wrong display results and once again the antenna the hyperlock antenna used so we can now move this to be sure move it away from the computer as far as possible also from other sources move the antenna where you want it to point it okay you just press the play button 
and it connects you to the spectrum. Let's play around with the software a bit. You can easily change the settings here, but you also have some preset configurations here, all the GSM stuff, LTE. <laughs> the, the RC stuff is pretty limited to 40 MHz, 72, 25, 35 and 40 MHz, as it was in the old days, but <laughs> most of the stuff isn't used anymore. Here I found a good example what the preamp can do for you. So if I activate the internal preamp, you see that the noise floor really drops. The red line was the maximum from previous sessions. And it is about 75 decibel. And now we moved to yeah, good 10 decibel lower, here even more. And if the, the noise floor lowers, rather than uh, almost a line, you get some signals here. Okay, so I just found out something interesting by just pointing the hyperlock really close to where the CPU is at. You see a typical peak at 570 megahertz. This way you can find electronic noise coming out of your computer. And that's with uh, the computer being set to airplane mode on. Okay, so with Spectrum set to 300 to 3000 megahertz, we really see a lot of stuff going on here. Low frequencies are for radio and TV. Around 1 gigahertz is where the mobile phones are, and these are the most, this is the most polluted area, I'd say. So this is where Wi-Fi's are in your city. So these again, 1.8, 2.1 gigahertz, uh, the mobile internet stuff, 3G and 4G going on. And if I wanted to zoom in, I just drag my box around here and see a closer image. Yeah, that's really something you only can do with a nice spectrometer. Let's move off, up from 4 to 6. Okay, in this picture here you see why 5.8 video might be a good idea. You don't have a lot of pollution in this, in this area. Even though uh, I have Wi-Fi on 5.8 activated in the house. So once again I want to show you the effect of the internal preamp. I'm on the 2.4 GHz band here to show my Wi-Fi. I have my antenna pointed up to the room where the Wi-Fi route is located. Now you see, uh, you can guess with the, with the maximum values in red here where my Wi-Fi hops around in the beginning of the 4 to 4 gigahertz band and you see a lot of noise and other signals here and if I activate the internal preamp boom <laughs> you see a uh, increase of sensitivity of from 98 to 108 that's almost uh, that's that's 20 decibel more sensitivity I mean the curve is about the same here, but in the lower bandwidth you really now see my spikes nice in my Wi-Fi. So that's that's really an an awesome demonstration of why the internal preamp is so important in this unit. Okay, so that's a really awesome device. If you want to know more details or uh, detailed measurements of some stuff, just let me know in the comments. First I started with this RF Explorer that I now have a few years. And it's really a really great device if you just need an easy look if your frequencies are free. Uh, there is a newer model that has sub gigahertz for easy UHF, that has 2.4 
if you're using that for video or for your radio control and that has 5.8 it's a 6g combo and i thought that it's around 365 dollars and this as i told earlier is like a small camera a compact camera that makes all the settings for you and that gives you good results if you want to take a really closer look and be able to zoom in or zoom really far out and see the whole picture get the spectrum for around there yeah, that's the downside as a hobbit toy it's a bit expensive it's around thousand dollars it's i'd say it, it, it's twelve hundred dollars with the internal preamp but if you're into this device uh, get the preamp because you see the, div the difference between red and green here is just the internal preamp it really makes the device very sensitive for it why did i get this unit because i wanted to measure for myself how influences come from one device to another how this limits your range and how far you have to move your devices on the aircraft apart that the video transmitter doesn't influence the radio transmitter tr uh, receiver uh, you also can measure uh, the, the statements that some vendors give you when they say their video transmitter is isolated you see on which frequencies the stuff sends out radio waves you can measure things like uh, does my GoPro emit RF noise and how far do I have to move it from my video transmitter or from my, from my radio receiver and could be a really great tool to measure the influence of different antennas you can mount uh, all your FPV antennas directly on the unit you can see how the range is affected by different antenna types and if you have a standard setup we have a video transmitter a few meters away and always use the same antenna there and then use different antennas on the spectrum okay so thanks for watching this video as always please thumbs up uh, and leave me some comments i really enjoy reading all your comments and answering your questions if there are any and on such a complicated matter there must be some questions i guess if you have some improvements let me know check out their website they have a lot of details you can download the manual to take a deeper look um, to how this device works and also check out the rf explorer if this is the option you'd rather go to okay so thanks for watching bye